Kendo, or Japanese swordsmanship, with its tradition of many centuries, has been transformed into a modern sport. It is aimed at developing character through training the body and mind. Like former masters of the martial arts, modern swordsmen strive to cultivate rich senses of justice, sincerity, courage, self-mastery, civility, and love based on the nation's ethical, religious, and philosophical traditions. Kendo can be enjoyed in a small space, regardless of season, time, age, or sex. It gives an adequate amount of exercise, helps toward the concentration of mind, and dispels mental strains. In a kendo match, the contestants wear protectors and score a win by accurate and fast hits on an opponent's head, body, or forearm, or lunges at his throat. Japanese swordsmanship has produced many great swordsmen, but earlier masters were intent on killing their adversaries. In the 17th century, a gifted swordsman, Yagu Tajima no Kami, produced a radical reform. He welded the art of swordplay to religious teachings, particularly those of Zen Buddhism. He turned swordsmanship into a way of spiritual culture to train the mind instead of merely improving one's skill in fighting. He preached that swordsmanship is not for killing, but for giving life to people. As the senior master swordsman to the shoguns, Yagyu Tajima no Kami delved further into the secrets of the art. As the use of real or wooden swords for training was too hazardous, he contrived a sword made of split bamboo, packed in a long sack covering, and devised many new maneuvers to overcome an adversary. His sacked bamboo sword was the direct original of the present day bamboo sword. Let's look at some of the ways of handling a real sword as swordsmen of feudal times used to manipulate them. This is to test your skill and the sharpness of a sword. A single clear blow through bamboos or sheaves of straw. At present, this test slashing is done only by holders of high dung or grades. They say that unless a swordsman has improved his skill to a high degree and learned how to concentrate his mind, it is extremely difficult to display such a feat. Another representative feat of old-time swordsmanship, it was devised to enable individual practice in the art of striking an adversary with a real sword, and is now considered indispensable for mastering the accurate use of the sword. is considered subordinate to kendo, but the two are inseparable. In feudal times of war, felling an adversary didn't mean you could immediately drop your guard. The victor had to keep fully on the alert until he had cleaned his sword and sheathed it again.
It was near the end of the last century that present-day kendo evolved from old-time swordsmanship, of which there were more than 300 different schools. At that time, the best forms of these schools were selected and systematically rearranged into the Nippon Kendo forms you are now watching. There are ten basic forms, seven for the ordinary sword and three for the short sword. Mastering them is considered essential for attaining proficiency. Yagyu in central Japan, where Yagyu Tajima no Kami founded the Way of the Sword, and where Kendo, as he taught it, is still faithfully adhered to. He combined swordsmanship with Zen teachings and devised ways of winning control over an opponent by snatching away the sword held by the other. Carrying on the centuries-old tradition, the young people in Yagyu are devoted to becoming Kendo men. The present Yagyu Kendo Hall is near the family temple of the Yagyus. The hall, in a way, also serves as a Zen temple. And before practice, these youngsters sit silently in meditation to develop mental concentration. Tokyo International Airport, the gateway to Japan, is this kendo hall. Every Sunday, juvenile swordsmen crowd to it for training from early in the morning. Training begins with cleaning the hall. The children scrub the floor until they can see themselves in it. Minds refreshed after their cleaning chores, they sit upright and worship the Shinto gods. In this hall, trainees are taught strictly to revere the gods and their teachers and must promise to use fair play with their comrades. Then comes practice in shouting. The issue of a kendo match is said to depend on the contestant's overwhelming zest, as shown by the sharp yells he uses as he fights. The effectiveness of physical maneuver is said to be proportional to vocal strength, and if one yells loud enough, his body moves smoothly and the motion of his sword is quickened. The trainees are taught to utter yells that resonate their whole bodies. The warming up is over and basic training now starts. Sword-wielding exercises to strengthen the arms is the most important part of such training. Footwork in kendo is performed without ever letting one's heels touch the floor. The reason it is popularly called cat's feet. Now, the face guard is put on. 
It must be securely tied so that it won't slip during the match. You must keep your eyes carefully on your opponent's movements as a whole, looking at him as if he were at some distance. That way, you are able to observe more closely his smaller movements. The trainees are now ready for Kakure Geko, or practice in which in pairs they learn the methods of attacking by hitting each other's head, body, and forearms, according to certain rules. Then they move on to Diekeko, advanced practice in which the pair strike at each other freely without following set rules. A kendo dictum has it that one sword becomes 10,000 meaning that if one fully masters the basic art of manipulating a single sword, he can use it in numerous other ways. It is essential to learn the fundamentals accurately by spending time on them. Let's look at a few of the principal kendo forms. This one, called nukido, is for parrying an opponent's sword blow aimed at the forehead by sidestepping and then hitting the right side of his body. Suryagedo is for stopping an opponent's sword swung at the forehead with the side of one sword, which is slipped past the opponent's to hit the right side of his body. This maneuver is for dodging bodily an opponent's lunge and hitting his head with the sword held only in the left hand. This one is for dodging an opponent's blow by stepping backward and hitting his cheek with the sword held in the left hand. The pair push at each other's sword guard. One of them seizes the moment his opponent is off guard and scores a facer, an effective maneuver in a close fight. Another scoring maneuver in which an opponent trying to strike the head is dodged and hit on the forearm. You are now watching a kendo match. Matches are held according to regulations set out by the Japan Federation of Kendo Associations. The ring ranges from 9 to 11 meters square in area, and one commits a foul if he steps out of it. Three fouls mean one loss. A victory is scored by three wins, each contest lasting three to five minutes. One chief and two sub-referees ensure fair decisions. Each of the referees raises a flag for a valid hit or lunge and a win is awarded when two or more flags are raised. A contestant is sure to win if he seizes his opponent's unguarded moment and strikes instantly. The precise moment at which he attacks is likened to a flash of light piercing the dark. In order to catch that moment unfailingly, he must attain a state of perfect selflessness, having banished all other thoughts from his mind. And such a state of mind is said to be the very essence of Kendo.